Hey guys, so today we're in the Beta Botanicals headquarters for a deep dive with Ben, the CEO of Beta Botanicals, on his frog habitat. You, yes. You want to tell Bi me a little the, bit about this? The bioactive uh, enclosure. Bioactive yes. enclosure. It is not a biotope for these tree frogs. It mm -hmm. is probably, um, you know, we plugged a blog post earlier, it's probably the botanical method realm, but bioactive enclosure. There's an amalgam of different plants from all over the world. The frogs are um, local tree frogs here that uh, adopted the garage. Yeah, you're telling me about that. So, so what, they adopted the garage. What, what do you mean by that? Here in the Pacific Northwest, we have summers that are super hot mm -hmm. and dry and long. And when we moved in here, I believe that the frogs could smell the water in the garage, and because our garage- Because you have multiple tanks yeah, in this garage. I think I have, I mean, if I set everything up, I'd probably have like 15 tanks, but 15 I think I have 10 tanks. operating right now. Okay. Um, so our garage door is not super secure, and I'm pretty sure that they hopped in through the cracks underneath it. Mm. So Puddles was the first frog to show up, and she adopted the 22 gallon that I'm eventually gonna turn into like the South American tank. And I found her in the water, and then she hopped up onto my shipping boxes. And I took her outside, put her in the plum tree, placed with some shade, some longer grass, so she'd get some moisture that was still green. Mm -hmm. A week later, she was back. <laughs> and I took her back out, put her in a different spot, a place we water outside pretty frequently. Yeah. She came back. Did it three more times. And I was like, okay, cool. This is clearly a sign. I'd already been thinking about moving into, like, bioactive enclosures, because... The botanicals that we put in the aquariums, same stuff you put inside bioactive enclosures. Mm. And so that's and, how we ended up with frogs. And you mentioned when we were talking earlier that like you've had a history with frogs. Like yep. you've been doing aquariums for a long time. Yep. But frogs were even before aquariums. Frogs predate aquariums. So so take us all the way back. But where does so, that start? From the moment I could walk, my grandfather had me out in the waterways by where they lived in Massachusetts. Okay. Kayaking, canoeing, fishing, putting dip nets into the waterways, pulling up um, bugs and plants and different larval fish and larval bugs and frogs. Mm -hmm. So I would be running up and down the banks of the river by the by the uh, the pond. I wonder if the frogs gonna like jump out. I, I was Definitely just looking thinking at, about he was it. Looking at that. Yeah. She likes to perch there, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, Moment of truth. <laughs> so collecting frogs with, on the East Coast with my grandfather is something that I've been doing since I could walk. Mm -hmm. And we'd bring them back, put them in a terrarium, and we would house them while I was visiting. And then when we would leave, we would re-release them back out into the waterways. And so he would teach me about their skin, what they ate, their eyes, their reproductive process, because they lay eggs out in the waterways, and they turn into tadpoles, everything, all like that. So... Yeah. Frogs have been something that have been very fascinating to me since I was a very young kid. And so I wanted to get back into them, didn't have the space or the means. You're getting a perfect opportunity. And yeah, with the new tropical garage that I've got yeah. going on. Um, so frogs was just a logical step for my interests, but also for the businesses as well. So And and you want to do more frogs. I want to do more here. frogs, yeah. So this is the first one. It's a trial run. And then eventually I'm going to do another one with more modern ways of building it. This, this is kind of the way people did it like eight years ago. And okay. there are easier ways to do it that last longer, um, creating some of the same aesthetics, but easier process. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I envision at the end of the day, I'll probably have between three and five of these set up. Um, I would love to do red eye tree frogs at some point. That will require a much larger enclosure with a lot more vertical space because those are big frogs. Okay. And those things, like these are eating fruit flies. Those ones are going to be eating crickets. So you can oh, think yeah, about the size bigger, difference bigger, in food. Yeah. Um, and then I want to do some thumbnail dart frogs. I want to get, I'm just still locking down the species, but something that is blue and yellow and makes loud calls and I can keep in a community. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of those that match that that you can only keep in pairs, but I definitely want to have a community of like five to eight. Probably um, we're going to get like, this is an exoterra tank and then the like um, luxury version of this is called in situ ecosystems and they make a much more plug and play version and that will be the setup that I'm going to go to next. Gotcha. So let's talk equipment here. Yeah. What, are we, what are we running? Um, because obviously this this kind of system doesn't require as much equipment as like an aquarium. Yep. Um, so what what kind of equipment 
do you need and are you running on a system like this? So it's an exoterra um, reptile amphibian en enclosure. It, the dimensions of it are 18 inches by 18 inches and then it's 24 inches tall. And it, the difference mainly between these systems versus an aquarium is their front opening doors. It's mm. way easier to access this than if you were doing mm -hmm. a top aquarium um, build. And then just like in a fish tank, I have a thermometer because the like amphibians, reptiles rely on ambient temperatures to regulate their body heat. So I need gotcha. to know how the bottom and the top difference is in temperature. Um, in terms of lighting, I actually have aquarium lights on this enclosure. Fluval 3.0 nano lights. Um, Looks I have, like you have two of those. I've got two of those. They're turned on full blast. All the color spectrums are turned on full. And then I have a UVB bulb, which in the hobby was something that was... Half of people said yes, half of people said no, but I have some good mentors who have been helping me along the way. Um, Jake's Jungles on Instagram and a bunch of tanks um, coached me through this whole thing, and both of them said, just do UVB. Make sure to the put those links in the description for yeah, sure. They, they have wonderful tanks and ecosystems for their frogs. They're really great people too. Um, so yeah. Awesome. So equipment-wise, so that's it. There's no heater. There's no heater. There will be an automatic misting system at some point. Okay. Right now, we've got a spray bottle. You're just manually doing it. How often do you spray it? Um, I give the tank about a good misting every morning. Every morning. So once yeah. a day. Once yeah. A day, once a day, right when the tank is heating up. That way, throughout the day, the tank can hold its heat and humidity yeah. for the plants and for the frogs. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I purposely mist all of the different plants, the moss, and then I give it just like a general spray. So we got the three lights, the spray. What What's your photo period on this? Yeah, so the Fluval lights are automatic. They're Bluetooth through an app on your phone, and I have the sunrise come on at 7.30 a.m., and okay. the second light turns on at 2, and then they sunset ending at 10.30 p.m. Hmm. So you have a little over a tw you have like a 14-hour photo period, which is what we experience here in the Pacific Northwest summers. Half the plants in here were collected out of my backyard. The moss is in the ferns, so they are used to that amount of a photo period. Okay, love that. Now, the fluval lights, so sunrise is at 7.30. Mm -hmm. Second light kicks on too. Does it, is it 7.30 to two that the fluvals take the full sunrise? Or no. what's your sunrise period The sunrise like? period, the sunrise and sunset is an hour and a half. An hour and a half, okay. Yeah. So the fluvals are on full, full power by nine o'clock by nine from nine o'clock until 9 p.m. they're on full power okay I don't know, do they ramp down or you just click yeah, it off yeah they ramp down okay that's like an aesthetic thing and also that's the way these frogs are used to experiencing it in nature yeah so I don't want to freak them out we're gonna give they them look very at home in this setup it takes it took them about three days to relax in this enclosure when I first put them in they definitely did a lap of the tank they were climbing on the glass up the side of the walls it blew my mind that they could scale the vertical foam but they had no problem yeah and then now they just have their spots that they bask themselves and then they know that i feed them just down here in this little location i love that okay so you mentioned the foam yeah and then the, the nice reaction you got yeah. there you want to tell me a little bit about the process of this foam that you got literally everywhere i feel like foam bioactive builds is something that a lot of people do and it was kind of, um, I learned about it first. There's a YouTube channel, which you'll link in the description because that's like the quintessential like frog and bioactive enclosure to Absolutely. follow. Oofraga histrionica. Oofraga histrionica. It is a t uh, species of dart frog. And so um, I don't, he like, I don't know if he mainstreamed the foam build, but I think in the social sphere, like when I Googled how to build it, it's his videos that come up. Mm. So it is great stuff, expanding spray foam, what you would use to weatherproof like cracks in your house mm. um, for like different pipes coming out. All that so kind just of stuff. what you would find at like a hardware store kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, you, you won't find the black in a hardware store. The you black, have to order okay. that online. You can get it from like Ever Evolving Exotics or the Bio Dude or Amazon. Yeah. Um, I like the black color because from the outside, when you because it's a full glass enclosure, yeah, it's black and it's not a tan color, so mm. I think it looks better. Yeah. Um, so you you put the tank on its side and you line the entirety of the tank in this expanding spray foam in like one bead thick, and then it expands to be about probably that thick, oh. and then you press your manzanita wood and the different um, plant pots into it that you'll fill with soil. 
I pre-planned all of that layout first before I put the foam in. And then, yeah, you put the foam in, you let it cure for about 10 hours, press the manzanita and the cups in, and then you encase the ends of the manzanita in more foam. You let it cure for, cure for 24 hours, and then you go in with a DeWalt drill. You can use any other <laughs> brand, but we're a DeWalt family. Um, and you use a wire brush and you grind down the sides and you sculpt it and you think about, okay, I want to have a ledge here for the frogs to rest on. I'm going to put plants on this ledge, some moss, so I want to have a little outcropping, all that kind of stuff. And you grind it down and you end up with like this nice rough textured rock composition that sort of looks more natural than the bubbly foam mm -hmm. that you get. So what I'm hearing is lots of work it is what, a, a labor of love what would how long did this thing take you to set up like start well, start to finish what start to you, finish what would well you say? i delayed the process a bit but if you did start to finish you could get a tank like this set up in you're supposed to elect the paint cure for a week so you're looking at like a three-week process because you got to do the so foam. Big commitment. it's yeah. basically like cycling an aquarium and setting that up yep exactly it's definitely a commitment the uh, easier ways to do this are to do a compressed cork background because mm. then there's no curing yeah and it's just is it's just way simpler so that's what i'm gonna do mm. next um and it comes in panels and you just uh, fix it into the enclosure um yeah, so like next steps after the foam was putting in a drainage layer down yeah, let's here. Let's talk about the substrate here. What do we what do we got going on? I've got two types of biodude substrate that are actually behind you down there. This is okay. a clay drainage layer mm -hmm. um, because I don't actually have a drainage port on this tank. That's going to be one of the upgrades for the mm -hmm. in situ ecosystems one. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a drainage port because as you're misting, watering the plants, water's going to accumulate, and you want yeah. water but not too much. Yeah. Then I've got their highest humidity substrate in here and you add a bacterial additive packet into that um, it benef it's like putting in like a, a bacterial additive into an aquarium just for like bioactive enclosure version gotcha gotcha um, there is a piece of drainage cloth in between so that the two don't mix mm. so the soil stays up the drainage layer stays down and then from there it was just what kind of plants do I want what kind of leaf layer am I, am I gonna use and, and obviously, you know, you're beta botanical. Leaf litter is so not a problem. Leaf litter is not an issue yeah, yeah. for you. But let's let's talk about plants. What what do we got going on here? So the leaf litter, I went with the classics. Okay. I did Texas live oak, and I did magnolia leaves, and then for seed pods, I did our cocoa pods and circulia pods, so that I could create caves for the frogs, little bodies of water if they do want to soak in water, because sometimes they do, mm -hmm. and then. This right here in the middle is a ram's horn pod, um, which is like a classic bioactive um, botanical to use because um, the cleanup crew, the springtails, isopods, mm -hmm. they're a fan of the leaf litter and those ram's horn pods. So how long would that take to decompose? I don't know yet. You don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> but I, u I use pretty durable leaves and pods, so I would imagine I'm going to be replacing the leaf litter in, my guess is six months. Okay. That's my guess. In an aquarium, Texas live you know? oak, it, yeah, aquarium is a little bit different because you've got snails are going to consume it anyways. Yeah, there it's. Yeah. This is all a very big learning experience for me, and I'm loving the process. Um, so, we'll do mm -hmm. a follow up, and I'll let you know when the, those leaves are broken down. So we side trailed there, but that's okay. So plants. Oh what, yeah, what do we plants. got here. I'm Wait. all botanicals. Your plants. Yeah. <laughs> um, I collected a bunch of different moss. I think this frog's totally going to jump on. Yeah, me. puddles is thinking about it. All right, so I collected anyway, a bunch plants. of different moss <laughs> that are local uh, just in my backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a forest in the back, and so I went out and collected the moss. And then these ferns, these are local licorice ferns that I collected. They grow on maple trees usually. Um, there's a rhizome. We're familiar with like Anubias and yep. Lobitis ferns. grows the same way, and I could not tell you what kind of moss I have. Okay. Um, this local puddles. Pacific Northwest moss, yes. we'll, call, so it, we'll, we'll call it that. We'll see how it does in the enclosures. And then in terms of the actual plants itself, I'm going to have to reference my notes on Yeah, this. that's fine. You know, in some ways, the moss, there is moss that looks kind of like Christmas moss and fissidens. There's peacock moss. I'm seeing in the Pe back, there's, there's some that looks like fissidens yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you know, it's, it's not, but resembles it. Oh, you know? yeah, absolutely. So plant list what? so in the back over there in that cup in the back we have magravia Mag macravia red umbulata 
Bless you. Umbalata, yeah. <laughs> um, so that one is going to creep and crawl up the walls. And then we have a Solanum Ulianum, which I believe is a uh, the red one in the top right corner. That okay. one's also going to trail. We have an Oak Leaf Fig, which is the top left. And we have a Ficus Panama, which is either this plant in the back there or this plant over here. I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. We have a Peperomia. I don't know where I put that one. And I... It's some kind of Peperomia species. And then there's a Peperomia raisin, Raisinetti, which is this one. And this was the one he sent that was the most expensive plant, and I believe the rarest. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's the Raisinetti. Um, but I basically ask my and then friend... And we just have Pacific Northwest oh, yeah. ferns going on. Yep. Oh, and then this one is a Peperomia Rosso. That one I got from a pl local plant shop. Um, sword, we got the uh, licorice ferns, local mosses. Gotcha. I've I've heavily debated putting these kind of ferns you should. in my forest. You though. totally should. I think I I think I'm going to. I can help you I can take you to a place where I know there's a ton of them growing, so and it's not too far away. I might take you up on that. <laughs> so But uh, I'm excited to watch the plants grow in. Yeah, absolutely. It's a waiting game. Did you have like a a vision for this setup or did you just kind of get in there and just put stuff i had a vision there? for the hardscape and then okay. i wanted textures so yeah. i kind of tried to space everything out account for the terrestrial plant growth because it's going to explode and they're going to get big but yeah. i wanted to keep a like foreground low and the background higher just like when you aquascape, aquascape build yeah. ecosystems yep um so and then i knew that i wanted to have like the ferns encroaching down into the middle to kind of mm -hmm. draw your focal point into the middle based yeah. on that luck. So I did have this vision and then I thought about plants that would help accomplish that vision. Yeah. Nice. I love that. Okay. So frogs need food. Oh yeah. What, what are you, what are you feeding these guys? That was probably the biggest learning curve. Um, I keep a, some live food cultures for fish, but learning mm -hmm. to culture fruit flies was been hard to wrap my mind around because we hate them when we think about them in our kitchens yeah. they're just like awful but well, if you want free ones come to my kitchen that's I, I have hundreds the tiktok video i posted was like you could just come to my kitchen and collect them it was yeah. it was hilarious um so you're culturing fruit flies yes but luckily they're wingless which means they can't fly okay which is amazing because sometimes when we feed they crawl out of the tank they can't fly it's just like my piece of my sanity peace of mind yeah is just, is just held easier to catch so i got these fruit fly cultures from knee herp net herp new, new england herpeticulture which yeah. is a wonderful website um and it, they have the kits and the media and you keep the fruit flies and then in two weeks you start a new culture you let it grow after two weeks you start a new culture and the cycle continues because the two frogs i have are going through a lot of fruit flies and when i have five enclosures like this i'm going to have like 20 cultures going wow yeah so they eat like a really easy to mix media on the bottom and then they just have like a larval stage and they pupate and then the wingless flies crawl out and that's what we dunk into the tank. Um, every other feeding, I give them a calcium supplement because in, the, in nature they would be eating a more diverse diet. Mm -hmm. So it's got like a calcium sub, uh, supplement, sometimes there's vitamin A, but I just put this in a, in a petri dish, dust the fruit flies, dump them in. So it's, it's, the feeding of it is simple. The culturing of it is a timeline thing. And so you've had this running with the frogs for yeah. how long now? Like three or four weeks. Okay. Would you say the frogs are, do they know when you're dumping the fruit flies in? Does Puddles. It take, is... Does it take work to kind of get their attention mm. a little bit? Put, as soon as I put the fruit flies in, Puddles hops over. Hops over. Sticky though, kind of like weights. Mm -hmm. And then I've noticed he will go around and mix up the leaves and the flies will crawl away and that's when he goes in and gets them. So they mm. have opposite feeding strategies. It's very weird. Um, but they don't have like a chameleon tongue. They basically mm -hmm. just like jump forward with their mouth open yeah. with a, with like just like a, a wide tongue extended and hopefully they stick on to some of those. When I was when I was a kid I had some some type of frog from Pet smart. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was one of those where I I wouldn't say it was poisonous, but like you had to wear a glove to touch it because your your skin would get irritated. Yeah. Yep. So I you know, I fed crickets 
um, and same with sort of eating thing like you know they don't they don't have a tongue it was like sneak up on it and then like bite ambush it, you know yeah. ambush and very fascinating you know yeah. um, but this was this was pre aquascaping Kevin this was 10 year old Kevin so right. I had like the the gravel substrate yep. with some rocks and wood sticking up and then like the plastic dish full of water yep, kind of yep. thing so definitely not something like this um i think my wife would kill me if i put something like this oh in no the house. <laughs> um i i want vampire crabs but i don't think that's ever gonna happen oh, uh, she'll come around she'll come around i need you to come over and, and convince her i'll know? just drop <laughs> off this stuff at the house and you'd be like oh it's here they gave it, it to me. I bring I, over some sourdough. Yeah. Okay, fair yeah, enough. We'll sweeten fair the enough. Deal. We'll we'll do we'll do that then. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, backtracking all the way back <laughs> to to the fruit flies. So they're semi used to that. Mm -hmm. um, are you gonna s keep them solely on fruit flies in the diet they're currently on, or is you see yourself kind of changing it up a little bit? I feed them fruit flies as their main diet, and then I feed them the peanut beetle larvae that mm -hmm. we talked about earlier that I feed the fish. In the shop tour video. Yep. yep, in the shop tour video. And I believe there are a couple other types of beetles that I'll be able to feed the frogs. Um, I think crickets are controversial in the frog world. Mm. So I'm still learning about that. So I can't confirm yeah. or deny if like pinhead crickets would be a good thing to be feeding these frogs. Mm -hmm. um, but I am. my goal is to feed them a diverse diet. Mm. So this is this is experiment one yes obviously beta botanicals you've got some space here yep. in your new setup you mentioned you want to do more is reptiles and frogs is that a direction you see beta botanicals kind of branching out into absolutely or do you want to stay solely into aquariums i am planning to keep aquariums and amphibians to start i don't know if i will venture into reptiles but i do sponsor a few ambassadors who are big into reptiles and ambass and uh isopods yeah. and some of them also have arachnids mm -hmm. so all of the products that i have are very versatile they're not just for aquariums so timeline what are we looking do you, oh my do you gosh. have that on your timeline or is that like a my a goal two years from no now kind sooner, of thing? way sooner than that my goal is january to begin setting up the first dedicated dart frog enclosure mm. i'm gonna let the tank mature longer i'm gonna let the biofilms um, develop on the leaf litter and the substrate the fungal growth happen the bloom i'm gonna let the plants establish mm -hmm. make sure i can keep those plants alive make sure the ecosystem is really established and then I'm going to welcome in those dart frogs and we'll see if temperatures are warm enough. Yeah. I set that tank up in January if I can have temperatures it's like the peak of our March. winter. So, we'll see if March is an okay yeah. window for shipping. They are shipped just like um, fish in a box priority overnight or UPS and mm -hmm. there's a heat pack and so I just got to figure out what species of dart frog I'm going to start with, but I am so hooked on just everything that this is it is such an evolution from aquariums it definitely i've definitely seen a rise in the reptile side of yeah. things especially on social media i feel oh, like yeah. in in the pandemic aquariums took off you yes. know because everybody was at home mm -hmm. and those i've seen the aquariums kind of kind of level out a little bit but i feel mm -hmm. like out of nowhere the reptiles mm -hmm. see i feel like every other story on my instagram page is somebody doing something with reptiles yes and they're not even they're an aquarium page you know i feel like everybody's getting into them i think it uh, speaks to people's fascination just with um different creatures and ecosystems that they can keep and yeah i definitely and i think especially that. you know with uh creatures like frogs right yeah. like so many people grew up i feel like catching frogs you know yep. i grew up catching the little green tree frogs around mm -hmm. my house all the time you know so i think it also kind of hits home for people you know, um, but this is this is amazing. So, future plans for beta botanicals. We've got reptiles and this kind of stuff coming up. Yes, um, it is definitely very in the works. Very exciting stuff. Um, yeah, it's gonna be really fun to build those out, and hopefully, those dart frogs that I get are gonna be ones that are kind of loud callers too. This has like a tremendous amount of peace to it. Like mm -hmm. as I'm sitting next to it. Um, Especially with it open, and this is nothing on aquariums, but you know, aquariums like you've got that glass panel, 
yeah in front of you and i think yeah. that does block a little bit of the the feeling that you can get you feel like it. you're in this whereas in this aquarium. right now like i feel like i just kind of want to want to crawl into it yep you know or it's coming I'll towards grab me my shrink ray yeah <laughs> and uh i i love it like i would i i wouldn't mind spending a night in this little in this little habitat here. i had someone comment on my tiktok video did they if i was a frog i wish i wish to be one of your frogs. so <laughs> i did i did this on a real while back but in this in this setup if you were a frog what would be your go-to spot that you would hang out Probably on this horizontal piece of manzanita wood. Okay. Um, on the moss or on the wood itself? Um, I'd be on the wood if okay. I was a frog because I'd be like right by that UVB bulb. I'd have a good eye, uh, hawk eye view of what's going on down below. And see it's the nice fruit flies warm. digging around. Yep, absolutely. That's That would be where I would go. Um, yeah. So I think sort of that main character energy vibe. Right at the I top. think for me, you know, I'm similar, similar on the same branch. But I think like right, right here, like right under this yep. fern, you know, on the soft moss, mm -hmm. um, same sort of thing that like that bird's eye view kind of thing. Uh, well, that's awesome. That's awesome. This is so cool. I'm gonna have to get one now. I think I'm gonna have to get <laughs> I've one. got you hooked. Yeah. Wait, no, we have to get you on botanicals you, first. So you've been trying for like three years for yeah, botanicals. You're going and, home and, with leaves today. Yeah. <laughs> you got me on the biotope. You hooked me there. Uh, but I haven't converted yet. But this one, this might, this might be it. Uh, but I really appreciate you letting me in to your office and taking a look at this. Absolutely, it's super been really fun, fun stuff. You're always welcome in the tropical garage. We'll definitely have to do a shop tour 2.0. Cool. And a, yeah. a deep dive 2.0. Yep. When this is a little more settled in, um, I think this frog is about to jump out. Yeah, I'm like waiting uh, <laughs> like a, a catch. So I think this might be a she good said, opportunity yeah. to end it here. But I appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Absolutely. It's uh, yeah, definitely going to pounce any second. So I think it's time to close this up. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys for joining. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.